Aloha and welcome to our composition of seawater video. In this video we will list the sources of salt in the ocean water and identify units used to express salinity. We'll recognize the factors that affect the density of ocean water and then we'll compare and contrast the three major zones of the open ocean. Okay, so let's explore the components of seawater. In this first pie chart over here, what we'll notice is if we take a thousand grams, a kilogram of seawater, 35 grams is going to be not water. Okay, the other 965 grams are going to be water. So that gives us a total of 35 parts per thousand is what we register salinity as being. So that means if I have a thousand grams, like we do in our example, 35 grams of that is going to be salt. Now remember that this is by mass, not by volume or amount. Okay, it's strictly by mass. When we look at that 35 grams, we can break it down in another pie chart and it'll show us that 55% of that is going to be chlorine, 30% of that's going to be sodium, and then there's this 14% out here that's going to be other materials. Now if we take sodium and chlorine together, we make sodium chloride, which is table salt or sea salt. So we can say that most of this particulate stuff inside of the water that we call the salinity is called that because it's going to be salt. Now, where did the oceans come from? Where did the salt in the oceans come from? That story takes us back about 4 billion years. In 4 billion years, the Earth cooled enough that we were able to start seeing rocks form. And as these rocks formed, all of this water vapor that was being put out by these volcanoes was cooling, condensing, forming clouds, raining. And as that water came and rushed over the surface, what it would do is pick up this sodium chloride, this halite, and it would carry it down with the water to the deepest parts, which eventually became our oceans. So our oceans formed about 4 billion years ago at the cooling of the earth. And then the salt inside of them came from this continuous and constant running water going across and dissolving out some of the minerals like halite. Okay, so even though there's one real big ocean and it's subdivided into four basins, there is some variation across the oceans and across the basins in salinity and temperature and density and things of that nature. So let's take a look first with latitude. And when we take a look at latitude, what we're measuring is how far north and south of the equator. So our equator is going to be here, and we have a south pole down here and the north pole over here. So as we travel, we notice that the temperature is going to be warmest at the equator, which is what we would expect. And as we travel north or south towards the poles, the temperature is going to get cooler, and that's something we would expect as well. With salinity, we see a spike in salinity here in the mid-latitude regions. Notice at the equator we have a slight decrease and then we'll notice that it tapers down as we go towards the poles as well. So salinity and temperature are going to vary with our latitude. So across the same ocean basin like the Pacific, we'll see these variations just traveling north and south. Now, with depth, we see these same kinds of things. With temperature, what we notice is in the lower latitude, so closer to the equator, we have warm surface temperatures and then we kind of get this leveling off as we go down so it's going to get a little bit it's going to stay nice and warm here and then it's going to cool off but it's kind of a levelish here and then as we get down deeper then we don't see any change here in this transition from temperatures so notice that we have a warm temperature here at the surface and a cold temperature here but we have this layer here we call this a thermocline and that'll actually create a barrier between these warm waters up top and the cooler waters down below when we get to the higher latitudes we don't see that this thermocline is absent we just have a straight temperature variant here so there's not as much of a variation here but what it allows is at the high latitudes we can have mixing of these deep nutrient rich waters and these nutrient, relatively nutrient poor surface waters. So in the poles, because it's all about the same, this water just kind of mixes together and goes around. Whereas in the low latitudes, we can actually separate it out. And that'll cause issues when we use up all the nutrients here, there's not that mixing going on. And the same is true with density. We'll notice that there is a lower density up in the surface water here in the low latitudes with this higher density because remember we have most nutrients and things will eventually settle down so we get a denser water there it's also going to be colder which is going to make it more dense and we can have instead of a thermocline we get a pinkocline here which is a density gradient 
and that'll separate these two but at the high latitudes we notice that it's not there as well so at the high latitudes okay at our high latitudes what we notice is there's a lot of mixing going on okay so we get this water that's going to mix around and we get a lot of nutrient rich oceans in the low latitudes what we notice is two distinct layers so if we have a lot of life up in this upper layer it'll take away all of the nutrients and we get this nutrient poor water which is separated by a thermocline or a pinocline from this nutrient dense water that's below it so that's the key to productivity in the oceans that we'll notice that we can see because of this nutrient rich water and its availability okay so the last thing we're going to talk about in our video are these three different ocean zones now we have the deep ocean zone here and that deep ocean zone accounts for about 80 percent of our oceans and it is going to be nutrient rich cold waters very dense we'll see these down here and that's going to be down at the bottom of the ocean and it remember up at the poles is where we tend to see that there's not those transitional areas we don't have the densities we don't have the thermoclines so we're going to see it mixing there and that's what this is trying to show us at the top of the ocean the surface area we call that the mixed zone and this is where we have a lot of photosynthetic organisms it's only going to account for about two percent of the ocean's volume and this is where we see the bulk of life because this is where we have photosynthesis and we can have the most living things happening here between the two we have the transition zone and this is where you're going to have some photosynthetic organisms going through there's going to be a raining of detritus coming down so the raining of these nutrients and you can get life going there and it's also going to be kind of cool so you'll get a little bit of mixing going on here as well so those are our three ocean zones um, the lessons will go into it in a little more detail than i did i just wanted to give you a brief introduction as always good luck on your quiz and we'll see you in the next video